Good morning, and welcome to First Baptist Church. Please join me in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for your presence with us on this beautiful day that you've given us to come to your house. We thank you for the health you've given us that permits us to be here this morning, and we pray for those unable to be with us for whatever the reason. We pray for all of those uh, leading the service this morning. We pray for Don, for Cynthia, John, and the choir as they lead in all that we do. We pray for our country, uh, I could say at a time of transition, but uh, we pray that you'll get us on the track that you would have us to travel and that you will bless and defend us. And certainly this church in a time of transition, we pray for your leadership in all that we do. We thank you for all the blessings you've bestowed upon us, and we ask that you fortify our faith, and we thank you most of all for your son Jesus, in whose name we pray, amen. Good morning on this beautiful Lord's Day. Welcome to the Lord's house, a special welcome to those of you who are visiting with us this morning. We're happy to have you. I um, ask you now, if you would, to grab one of these hymnals in front of you and turn to hymn number 425, which is He Keeps Me Singing. You'll see it's a long one. It's a five verser, so we're going to cut out verse number three. At least we're going to try to remember to do that. So if you'll join with me in singing 425 and stand as you're able, please. very much and before you sit back down grab somebody's hand next to you whether you know them or not and welcome them here It is good to gather in God's house and would like to welcome you here. If you are a visitor, I would, we would certainly love to have a record of your visit. I believe in the racks in front of, in front of you, there are some blue visitor's cards. Now, 
I've seen some IRS forms that are a little less inquisitive than those things, but uh, uh, if as long as we can have your name and address and phone number that we may contact you and thank you for being here, would love to have that. And if you don't find a blue card, just use the back of an offering envelope and put that on there. But it is good to have you here. We'd call your attention to several announcements in the bulletin. This afternoon at 2.30, there is the bridal shower for Sarah McFadden, and would invite you, if you're able, to come and attend that. Also want to point out that uh, the past few weeks, we've kind of changed the weekly activities, but we will be having an evening worship service at 6.30 tonight, so if you're able, please come back for that. And Wednesday, we will also have a, a 6.30 prayer meeting. So please notice that in the bulletin and uh, the other activities of the week. Church Library is still having a book fair giveaway, and the, the number of books available seems to be growing. So don't hesitate to stop by and, uh, and get some of those. It's a uh, two bags for one special, so take, uh, take what you like. The um, next Saturday, July 23rd, is Faith and Family Night at the, the Legends, and if you are Sunday School group or any kind of group would like to go, uh, be a perfect night for that. You see other items in the bulletin. Uh, again, Feed My Sheep Ministry is on Wednesday. Can always use other people, some empty plastic bags, and monetary donations. So uh, please uh, be aware of all the activities in the church and welcome to attend and support and help our church grow in any way you can. Thank you. We uh, come now to a time where we're going to sing our offertory hymn, number 411. Again, if you're able, please stand and join in the singing of this hymn. Bob Hampton, would you lead us in our offertory prayer, please? Our Father, who is to come, give us thanks for this offering, and we thank you for our church, and we bless and pray your blessing upon it. In Jesus' name, we offer this in your glorious and precious name. Amen. Thank you. 
thank you so much for everything. In Christ's name, amen. Before we look at a passage of scripture for today, uh, a couple of things additional I would like to tell you. Uh, as some of you are probably aware, especially if you sit on this side, we still have one air conditioner unit down, uh, and we're working on that. So if you feel like uh, taking the coat off, I may do that myself in a minute. Uh, feel free to do that. Um, I do have one fan, and I'm the high, highest bidder now can, uh, can maybe talk me out of this thing. The other thing, uh, next week, our uh, service will be somewhat abbreviated. As I think everyone knows, we're looking at the process of calling an intentional interim pastor here at First Baptist. And next week uh, in the service, the last part of the service, the last 15, 20 minutes, will be a question and answer period about that process. So next week, our service, worship service itself, will be somewhat abbreviated to have this most important time for the church to have questions, ask and answered. We turn now to uh, our scripture passage, and it's a responsive reading, and I would invite you to turn to 677, primarily taken from Psalms 90. Um, I don't know if you're aware, but Moses apparently wrote one psalm, and it would be this one, and so that makes this the oldest psalm in the, the book of Psalms. And we're reading responsively portions of that. So join with me, 677. Let us read responsively. Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. When I consider the heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars, which thou hast ordained. For a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday, when it is past and as a watch in the night. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Let thy work appear unto thy servants and thy glory unto their children. 
and let the beauty of the Lord of our God be upon us, and establish thou the work of our hands upon us. Yea, the work of our hands, establish thou it. And may God bless the reading of this word. We come now to a time of prayer. Uh, several are listed in the bulletin. Bring you word on Gietta Ballard. Uh, John shares that she is uh, living with uh, her daughter, uh, looking for to, to get the address in our bulletin before long, so continue to remember Gietta. There are others mentioned there. I know in various Sunday school classes, individuals were brought up and asked that you bring those up uh, in your own time of prayer. Let us go now to God, thanking him and asking his blessing on these that have special needs, upon our servicemen and women and those that serve in our protective services in this country and our country and this church as we are in a time of transition. Let us pray. Lord God, you hear our silent prayers. You know are in our hearts those that we have not mentioned verbally but are there and need your hand of healing and help and support. Lord, be with all those that have needs of any kind. Let them know that you are there. Give them the assurance of your care. We ask your guidance upon our church as we seek a pastor to lead us. Lord, we ask that your protection upon our, all our servicemen and women around the world and at home, and all those first responders that serve to help keep us safe. Lord, we thank you for the freedom that you give us, especially the freedom in Jesus Christ. For it's in Christ's name we do pray. Amen.
in a world gone crazy, isn't it good to know in Jesus Christ it is well with our souls? May we have a, another word of prayer. Lord God, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts will be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. You know, we do live in a, a reference to time, then, now, later, or as the title of the sermon says, yesterday, with emphasis today on yesterday, today and tomorrow, or the past, present, future. We live in reference to time. God is the only one that lives outside of time because in his creation, God created time. So we live in, in reference to time. And, and now as a church, we're in a transition time uh, between pastors. We face challenges and we face opportunities. And it's appropriate for us to think about time, if you will. And this morning, uh, we're going to focus on that part of time that we commonly call yesterday. Now, I think it's only fair to warn you that um, I'm going to use some of the thinking uh, of some giants of uh, theological, philosophical thought, the Beatles, uh, Bruce Springsteen, and William Shakespeare's Macbeth. I mean, what, what higher thoughts can you have than that? Yeah. Uh, but, you know, I, I hear a few snickers and see some smiles, and, uh, but I think it's true. Songwriters and novelists, writers of any kind, write to address the human situation. And so what they have to say, even though it's not real biblical, it addresses the situation that we as humans find ourselves in. Uh, if we're going to talk about yesterdays, I mean, Bruce Springsteen's song, Glory Days. You know, how many of you remember Glory Days, that song? A few of you, come on now. <laughs> you know. Part of it says, glory days, well, they'll pass you by. Yeah, just sitting back, trying to recapture a little bit of the glory. Well, time slips away and leaves you with nothing, mister, but boring stories of yesterday, glory days. You know, that's one perspective on, on yesterday. Were they, uh, were they so good that they outshadow what we have today? Is today so bad? that the only enjoyment we get is looking back at yesterday? And you can't mention yesterday in the Beatles without thinking of the song yesterday. Yesterday, all my troubles seem so far away. Now it looks though they're here to stay. Oh, I believe in yesterday. You know, with all that's going on in our world and nation, that might well be a good theme song because a lot of us want to look back at yesterday when things were a little bit calmer and it didn't seem to be so much terrorism going on. Well, the other giant I want to think about is, is Shakespeare and Macbeth. And I, I want to ask, now, I'm looking at a lot of different ages here, so we've got a lot of different yesterdays, uh, time frames. I, I'm almost inclined to say, if you've seen X number of years of yesterday stand up, but I could get myself in trouble quickly with that one. So I'll stay away from that. But how, how many of you remember back in uh, elementary and middle and high school days where we were called on to memorize poems and, and passages of different things? Would any of you remember that most famous uh, thing that we memorized out of Macbeth? You can say it with me. Tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. Creeps in this petty pace from day to day to the last syllable of recorded time. And all our yesterdays have lighted fools the way to dusty death. Out, out, brief candle. Life's but a walking shadow. A poor player that struts and frets his hour upon the stage and then is heard no more. It is a tale told by an idiot full of sound and fury signifying nothing. Now that's a downer. That's a real downer. Uh, all of these words from Springsteen and the Beavles and Shakespeare through Macbeth are, 
they, they weren't written to address spiritual concerns, but I think they do actively, uh, accurately reflect a lot of the human condition, at least the condition that a lot of people see. You know, Shakespeare's view of, of life to me seems especially sad, the view of life and the view of human experience. But you know, it's, it's really not much different if we look at uh, Ecclesiastes, the first part of Ecclesiastes, the words of the teacher, the son of David, king in Jerusalem, vanity of vanity, says the teachers. Why do people gain from their toil in, in, at which they toil under the sun? A generation goes and a generation comes, but the earth remains forever. The sun rises and the sun goes down and hurries to the place where it rises. The wind blows to the south and goes around to the north. Round and round goes the wind, and on its circuits the wind returns. All streams run to the sea, but the sea is not full. To the place where the streams flow, there they continue to flow. All things are wearisome. More than one can express. The eye is not satisfied with seeing or the ear filled with hearing. What has been is what will be, and what has been done is what will be done. There is nothing new under the sun. Is there a thing of which it is said, see, this is new? It has already been. In the ages before us, the people of long ago are not remembered, nor will there be any remembrance of people yet to come but those by those who come after them. Wow. Is life really that futile? Are we, are we burdened by an existence that really is that futile? You know, we may not recognize it here because the song, How It Is Well With Our Soul, those who have accepted Jesus Christ understand the meaning of true life. But our neighbors and our friends and obviously a lot in our world don't understand it from the same perspective that we do. You know, does, does the relative brevity of our time spent here on earth, does that render our lives, our lives purposeless? Is there, does it take the value of the time we spend here, whether it's two years or a hundred years? Now, that's, that's kind of the question that these people are asking when they write these words. You know, one of our Sunday school classes has been talking, looking at the cycle of sin. You know, the fact that uh, God created everything is perfect, but humankind sinned. And that sin causes disasters. And we ho holler to God for help. And God sends us redeemers or gives us help and things are okay but then we revert right back does that cycle of sin that seems to be going over and over and over again does that drain the joy out of our lives today you know psalm 90 as i shared makes up most of the responsive reading we had this morning and psalm 90 i think helps us look back at yesterday I think we do need to look at yesterday not only our individual yesterdays but yesterdays in general you know Psalm 90 says uh, without God life is futile you ever uh, I, again I'm showing my age any of you use one of those things that went back and forth and kind of made two boards out of one. I think it was called a handsaw. I don't know if anybody's got any of those anymore. But uh, if you had one of those, how much success do you think you would have trying to drive a nail with that thing? That's not what it was created for. And I think as human beings, if we're gonna understand purpose in life, we really have to understand what's going on in creation and where we fit in that creation. See, I want to say to us today that I, I think, in a nutshell, our problems today, whether they be local or terrorism on a global scale, has to do with where is our place in creation. I think a lot of people don't even recognize God 
they ignore God's existence that immediately causes problems. And other people want to say, yeah, I believe in God, but the way we act is I'm more important than he is. And that causes us problems too. Psalm 90 basically says, without God, life is futile. Um, without God, our, our brief expanse here on this earth may be without purpose. Because we have to understand, Psalm 90 helps us to understand that we were created for a purpose. And that purpose lies within the will of God. And whenever individually or as a church, if you will, we try to live our existence outside of God's will, it's doomed to failure. It will be without ultimate purpose. And without God, that cycle of sin overwhelms and destroys individuals, nations, civilizations. So as we look at this passage from Psalms 90, it, it declares that God is sovereign. If we want to look at yesterday in a general sense of history, we've got to understand that God is sovereign. God existed before anything else. That's, that's a valuable lesson to be learned from history. God existed before anything else. And God is the creator. We did not make God. God created us. And God is the sustainer of all that there is. Without God, stars fall out of the sky. The earth ceases to exist. We no longer have life and breath. God is the constant sustainer of what he has created. God has unlimited power. I don't care how much you work out and how much you train, there reaches a point where age makes a difference. We don't have the power. You know, all I can say to you is they're putting dog food in a lot heavier packages than they used to. And we all understand that. God has unlimited power. God has unlimited knowledge. We, we don't always understand. We can't grasp time. God works outside of time, and he has knowledge that's before time, during time, after time. He has unlimited knowledge, and God has unlimited presence. He's here with us right now, today. God is with us individually. I don't care where you go. I don't care what kind of trouble you're having. I don't care what challenges that you're facing. God is there, and God cares. As a church, does he know that we're without a pastor? Well, yes, he does. This is his church. This church doesn't belong to us. This is God's church. And God's going to take care of the situation. Our job is to understand what he would have us to do in that process. One thing that we often overlook that Psalms 90 talks about, uh, God really cannot abide sin. He cannot abide sin. It messes up that right relationship that he intended for creation. He cannot abide sin. And that God reigns. God is supreme. You know, I think Psalm 90, along with uh, the rest of the scripture, and we could spend all day looking at various scripture passages, but I think they declare immediately that our lives, our existence, cannot be understood apart from understanding that God is sovereign. And so as we approach life, our individual lives, our church lives. We much approach it understanding that God is sovereign. So Psalm 90 helps us to look back at yesterday's centuries and centuries and centuries ago. But there's a yesterday and closer to us, still a long time ago as we measure time, was the birth, the life, the death of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ 
is the part of yesterday that makes it well with our soul. Even when Moses was writing this song, God had in his plan that Jesus Christ would be the payment for our sin. Now, are, are we sinners? I mean, if you're not a sinner, feel welcome to leave because uh, even if I'm standing here by myself, I've got something I need to say. But the older you are, the more we know how much we truly are sinners. We simply haven't done at all times, in all places, in all things, what God would have us to do. And, and so um, we have Jesus Christ. I, I want to look again at, at Psalms 90, part of it, <clears throat> beginning with uh, verse 7 in Psalms 90. Excuse me, 12 in Psalms 90. The psalmist writes this, So teach us to count our days that we may gain a wise heart. The only wasted life is a life that doesn't understand and is not lived with Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Turn, O Lord, how long? Have, how long? have compassion on your servants. Satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love so that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad as many days as you have afflicted us and as many years as we have seen evil. Let your work be manifest to your servants and your glorious power to their children. Let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us and, the, and prosper for us the work of our hands. O oh, prosper the work of our hands. That prayer that Moses offered for the people was fulfilled in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, God's Son, gives us ultimate meaning to our lives. So as we look at yesterday, I think as a church we look at yesterday, how did we live as a church that shared Jesus Christ? How did we live as a church that brought glory to God in this place and in, in our time? And individually, we need to do the same thing. Know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior because he's the ultimate cure for any problems you have in yesterday and he's the ultimate promise for today and tomorrow. And then ask, Lord, how have I lived for you? What is it that you would have me do? And if I may have a, a little literary license, if you will, I would kind of like to rewrite Macbeth and say it this way. Yesterday and yesterday and yesterday proceeds in this steady pace from day to day to the last syllable of recorded time. And all our yesterdays light the wise the way to eternal life. Out, out, lack of faith. Life's but a preparation for eternity where peace and joy fill the stage and life is forevermore. It is the truth of Jesus told down through the ages full of forgiveness and mercy signifying everything. Let us pray. Lord God, fill our yesterdays with true understanding of your place in all eternity. Lord, help us to recognize you as sovereign over all that there is. And Lord, help us have meaning in our lives through our faith and trust in you through Jesus Christ. For it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We come now to a time of invitation. The invitation is simply this. If you have some kind of concern that you are dealing with God and you would like to share that publicly, you may do so at this time as the custom of this church. If you have a birthday or an anniversary near to today and you would like to share that and uh, reaffirm your faith at this time, this is a time for that. Whatever your decision, whether it's one that you make privately where you are or one that you want to share publicly, now is the time as we stand and sing, let Jesus come into your heart.